Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make some hangers from a wood. These are just wood discs and these are ones I'm in the process of working on. They've had their first resin coat to hold down the words. And I'm just going to show you how to make something like this. So, these are ones I'm in the middle of painting. So the first thing you want to do is you want to source yourself some slices of wood and I actually got these on eBay because I was too lazy to go and get a branch from my garden and use my husband's saw to slice it up and then um, these actually came in a pack of I think 30 on eBay and they were pre-drilled and they're all nice and the same thickness and the first thing I did was give them a white coat of paint and this does two things first it absorbs into the wood so your next layers of paint don't soak right in there and it sort of primes the surface makes it a bit smoother so when you do start painting like this the color has gone really evenly so that will be the first stage i'm going to use a really pale colored sharpie to draw out the design i want but you can also use stamps for my unicorn head i used my lenny stamp i just did it in black ink and printed it straight on there and on the backgrounds i used my swirly stamp so he's still drying before i outline him so let me see what am i going to paint or draw hmm you know what i think i might do another lenny in different colours so I take my stamp because this is probably the easiest thing for you to do is pick a stamp you really like give it a good coating of ink where you want to stamp it it doesn't really matter what the ink is because you're going to cover the ink anyway I'm just using this ink it up I don't even know if it's water based or whatever then you want to stick your bit of wood over and you want to press the whole thing really hard really really hard so you get a sort of impression now don't worry if it's not like a really clear impression it's only there as a guide and the next thing you're going to do is depending on what your stamp is you're going to do your background colour first I'm just using acrylic paints some colours I have mixed here and actually for most of these I'm using the Dilutions paint because they're like a really thin fluid acrylic paint with really good coverage I've got them in like five colours, six colours or something okay for this one I think I'm going to do the unicorn kind of plain but because the rainbows are kind of my trademark I'm going to do a bit of a rainbow in behind And these make really cute gifts. I'm just roughly doing a sort of bunch of stripes. These make really cute gifts because you can personalise these in so many ways. Right, I've watered down quite a light blue here. So while I paint this, I'll stick on a tune and you can watch me paint.
all your picture and I've not done any fine details because I'm actually going to dry this and use a pen. Now I go between using a Posca white pen or just a plain back gel pen. Now you need to watch sometimes some gel pens really run. These are just a Tesco basic value gel pen and I find with these these can run a little bit but if I'm careful and sometimes if I do like a gel mat medium over the top it stops them from running. So I'm just going to dry this. Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry by itself and I'll come back to this one just so I don't ruin my pen because you want to make sure this is completely dry before you do any outlining. Now I'm going to show you if you want to add the words to your piece like this. I just printed out sheets of word on acetone and then you just cut them out and when you apply your first coat of resin or if you're using you could use glossy accents. You push this down into the first layer just to adhere it and to remove any air from behind it. Let that dry and then you would dome over the whole thing. So I'm going to go around with my pen now. Can't decide. I think I'll do the background in white pen and I'll do the actual unicorn in black. so if you have really ni nice neat handwriting you could write on your little quote if you want as a quote but my handwriting is rubbish and I prefer the look of the printed quotes on my PCs so um, you leave this to completely dry because sometimes the ink in your pen can take a while to dry and your pen stage is when you can add any fine details add things in like I added all these little dots I just thought it needed something to break it up and you just make it your own basically this is the stage where the sky's the limit make your own design make it as pretty as you like leave it to completely dry now an optional step is if you wanted to add glitter there's a few ways you can add glitter you can use stickles you can use mod podge and fine glitter i actually prefer nail varnish because it's quick it's easy and it it lies nice under the resin it doesn't cause issues with the resin it also can help seal some of your gel pen that might later leak mm, where else do I want to apply some glitter maybe some little dots here and there it's just a quick cheap and easy way to add glitter to a piece and I have a whole range of nail varnishes for this specific purpose and I just like the odd little bit of sparkle I think it adds a little bit more it's the same with the metallic colours you can add metallic colours using nail varnish it just I think it looks nice so when you've added that you need to leave that to dry and when you're finally happy with how it looks depending on if you have any things that need glued down to your piece for example my lettering on these I do a thin coat of resin to put these in and then I'll dome over the top of this but with this with no lettering as soon as this is dry I'll just completely cover this in a thick coat of resin be careful around the hole because it will seep through and then once I've done that I'll come back to you Okay, once you have domed your piece with resin, let's say this piece is finished, even though it's technically not, this is when I address the edges. 
and the back. Now for the back I like to leave it really plain and wooden. Sometimes I sparkle them up, sometimes I don't. So I just remove any paint that I may have got on the back with just a little nail file. Don't actually think that's paint. And the edges I decide upon a colour. And I normally just go in with a paint pen. Just find the colour that I want. With just a Sharpie paint pen. And colour in the edges. You can leave this natural wood if you want. It depends how neat a painter you are. There have done some where I've been really careful and not got paint on the edges. But I actually prefer the look of the paint on the edge. So... Okay, when you've done that, if you're as messy as me and manage to get paint on everything, just give your resin a little clean with a baby wipe while it's still wet and it'll clean right up. And maybe your fingers at the same time because I'm getting everything messy. So depending on what you want to do, I usually leave that to dry and then I'll just go over the top with a really fine acrylic varnish just to seal that paint because the poster paint is not permanent it's only um, water based and I don't feel it I mean it's not like you're going to touch a hanger much but I just like everything to be doubly sealed okay so I'm leaving my backs as is next thing to do would be to use some beading wire or fishing wire out either or does actually find the fishing out the fishing wire um, is a little bit stronger so I get my fishing wire you measure it just a length of it and I've managed to tangle this up measure it just the length that you want I thread it through can't really see under these lights makes things a bit bright for filming I bring both the ends together pull them straight and then I just do the kind of knot where you knot up both ends together like so but keep your finger in it so you can bring it all the way down to the bottom like so and then use some beads with these ones I'm just using um, acrylic beads just because I really like these beads Whoops, and they're going everywhere so we'll just put a couple of beads on this is just really to make things prettier I really like these beads I don't know if you can see what I'm doing so I just usually put two or three beads on like so just because it looks cute then take one of your loops oops front of your loops and just take it back through the bottom of the last bead again up to the top and this is just to secure all your beads to the to the hanger so pull the wire up pull your beads down and then just do another double knot My beads are taken a wee and to get your knot down to the bottom just put something inside the knot and pull the knot down to where you want it and that's them nice and secure well it would be if I'd actually there we go they won't go too far then determine deciding where how long you want your hanger to be this one's not very long I do another knot at the very top double it up so I've got two knots I don't know if you're seeing any of this just to make it really strong just on top of that knot and then just a little little tiny dot of glue whatever you want 
whatever glue you prefer. I like to use this relief paste because it dries really quick and it's really strong, it's like a glass glue. Just cover your little knot. As soon as it's dry, you can just snip off the edge. Now, depending on what you want to hang it on, I usually find that most people just hang it up like this on a little hook, or you could supply, um, I have window suckers, I have window suction cups, which you just put around, I can't even see what I'm doing, this light is so bright, I can't, why do the fiddly things never go right, you just hang them around that and it just attaches to a window, or if you were feeling a bit more creative, you could make a hook out of wire, wrap wire around there and make a little hook, but I think they look fine just like that. So that's pretty much them. These are really cute little hangers. Some of them I decorate the back, I'll see if I can find one. Okay, here's a kind of larger one where I just did a glitter resin on the back. This is a bigger hanger I'm working on, but this is the exact same process. This is wood cut into the shape that I wanted it. This is the back and this is going to be a hanger. I'm going to put some eye screws down here to add some dangly charms. These all need polish, they're all gross because my hands are minging. But that is wooden hangers. That's how cute they turn out. And I just love them. I think when you add a little quote or a little sort of personalization to it, maybe put a friend's picture on it or something, or a picture of their pet with their pet's name. They're just really cute, really make really great gifts. Can't even speak. So, I'll be continuing these for the rest of the day. I have a big huge pile of them because I'm going to be doing a Volkswagen event in May, which is the first of my events this year. There's a couple after that. And it's a three day event in Bigger in Scotland. And if you follow the Volkswagen community, you'll know the dates because you'll have been there every year. You'll have saw me last year. And I have a stall there, Liana Marcel and I sell all my lovely stuff and this year I'm really focusing on really bright, colourful, happy things to take to the fair because well it's a nice bright happy event and I love it so if you're going to be in Bigger Scotland in the month of May then come and see me at the Bigger Show Park where the Volkswagen 3 day event is on and you'll see some of my finished hangers. Cheerio bye!